So if you don't know, ever since the release date trailer dropped in April, Splatoon JP has basically been tweeting out a bunch of random news over the past month or so. This can be anything from a brand, to a new weapon model, to a whole new stage. And since there's now a lot of this and we must be really close to more news, I figure I might as well do a summary and mini analysis of everything we have so far. I'm going to be organizing this into sections you can find timestamped, and I'll be cross-referencing the Japanese Twitter since the direct translations can sometimes provide more info, which is done through this account you can find in the description. If you enjoy this, be sure to subscribe so you can catch up when I break down future news, and without any further ado, let's get started. First off, there's a brand new song called See Me Now, which is by a new band, well, basically Squid Squad with one member replaced, called Front Row. This is a song playing in the background, so if you like it, it's gonna be in the next game. And the second new song comes from the one, the only, Off The Hook. So it seems like since the second game, this group has been on a world tour and scouted out a group of unknown but vibrant musicians to make a new band called Damn Socks featuring Off The Hook. Playing in the background is their first single, Candy Coated Rocks. I like what they did with this band. It seems like they already have more character and the fact that they did a world tour, which seems like there's a lot you can do from that, and the fact that they're picking up more unknown artists seems really awesome. It just seems like there's gonna be more story to tell about Off The Hook, and I love that they're getting some character development. It's great to see their storyline continued in the third game. Next Next up, let's look at weapons. First of all, we know the bow is officially called the Tri-Stringer and part of the Stringer class, meaning it's an official new weapon class and we will see more of them. I've covered the bow before, but just for a quick summary, Tri-Stringer has two charges, a fast strafe speed, a charge hold, a tri-shot, explosions at the end, an arc, unlike chargers, a high jump, and can shoot horizontally when grounded and vertically in the air. So this weapon has a lot of gimmicks and currently, it seems pretty decent. I'm gonna be honest, it's gonna have a hard time competing with chargers, but we'll See. Secondly is the confirmation that all base weapons from previous games will return on launch. Now if you're confused, base weapons basically means their first kit. So for example, NZAP is back, but maybe not NZAP 89 or 83 yet. This is great news, as Splatoon 2's launch did not have weapons from Splatoon 1 for a few months, and we absolutely cannot have this again with the game on the same console. A rush launch is a big concern for me and a lot of people, and this is a great step towards easing those worries. Splatoon has also shown off a bunch of the new models, as well as some weapons that are maintaining their old ones. They're doing this by class, and we don't have all of them quite yet, but here's the ones we know so far. For shooters, Splattershot Jr., Splattershot, 96, and Atri have new models. Atri has a really nice garden hose area, and Jr. being transparent is awesome. 52 and Splattershot Pro slightly modified models, and Aerospray, Splushomatic, and Jet Squatcher have the same ones. Squiffer, Charger, and E-Leader all have new models. E-Leader is the 4K, but it looks like it has closer to the color scheme of the 3k of Splatoon 1. This is my favorite of those three. In other news, it looks like Squiffer is a lightweight weapon, judging by the wording on both the Japanese and English Twitter, which would be a buff basically being an extra two subs of swim speed and run speed at all times. Both Roller and Dynamo have new models. Dynamo in particular is fantastic. I've seen some people talk about how it's like a toothpick change, and I gotta be honest, look at the wheels here. Now look at him here. This model is so much better. Another interesting thing is this is the only weapon we've seen with two looks, as this model view here is the only time we've seen Silver Dynamo, and every other time in the game, it's been Gold. This is really strange, and I wonder if this means kits are still a thing, or if Gold Dynamo was the default and they went back on it. We'll have to wait to find out. As for Dooleys, we actually saw Dapple Dooleys in a single player screenshot with the same model. I'll go over the single player one later in the video. For Sloshers, Tri Slosher has an entirely revamped model, which is pretty strange. However, this is actually something they probably wanted to do for a long time, as the beta Tri-Slosher back in Splatoon 1 was this model, which is basically a school kid carrier. By the way, if you're curious what this would look like in-game, here's a mod by Falco that shows it off in Splatoon 2. I think it actually looks pretty nice. Finally, Machine and x also got new models. If x top part opens, that will be amazing. As for Spotlings, Heavy and Hydra have new models. Heavy seems to have stuff from Gal, but that's about it. I think these look kind of mid. Last up for weapons is a sub-weapon, Angle Shooter, or Line Marker in Japan if you want to use a better name for it. I did a full video on it here, but to summarize, it does damage and bounces off objects. It's very smart and a direct upgrade from Point Sensor. I will not miss it personally. All right, next up, let's speed run the brand info. There's a bunch of returning brands and one new one. Crack On, a returning brand which now offers more shirts and hoodies. Barazushi, I probably said that wrong, a new brand that primarily does hoodies, 
but also has a hat. Tenetech is back with a new focus on recycled gear. Forge is back and also specifies in nice jackets. And Perry specifies in glasses and vests, another returning brand. Tony Kenton is back and they just straight up have a lot of gear. Anaki is back, which has some new long sleeve shirts, but I gotta say the new thing here is definitely the chokers. Finally, Squid Force is back. There's still the branded turf war. They did the new model for the splatter shot and they have ripped t-shirts, which is probably my favorite one out of all the brands here. Next up is single player. First off, we have basic pictures of Fuzz Fuzzy Octarians and Fuzzy Octolings, confirming a lot of returning enemies. One of these screenshots also features Octo Expansion Goalposts. This indicates it might be more than the usual hero mode, and I gotta say, thank god. This, along with the next detail, really makes me more hopeful for the single player in recent times. We get to see more of Alterna here, which features the alternate ink tank we saw a while back, as well as mentions a lot of incomplete structures, which may be a theme, such as an incomplete failure to bring back mammals. That's cool, but what I care about most here is since we have now seen Dapples and machine in the return of the mammalians trailer it seems like in addition to the brand new hero shot we can use a lot of base weapons in single player which sounds so much more fun than being limited to just a few hero weapons overall we're still largely in the dark about single player but it looks like it has much more of an actual story and a lot more variety in terms of what you can do than the base hero mode of splatoon 2 and i'm so excited now next up is a brand new stage undertow spillway which is basically a flood bypass japan actually has a huge one of this which is probably what it's based off of i'm a big fan of this layout it's so Somewhat flat, but with a good amount of slopes, it seems like it can favor a variety of weapon classes. The two glass spike areas seem cool for something like Splatlings to set up, but doesn't seem like it takes up too much of the stage like on Schellendorf, having them be to the sides instead, which I like a lot better. The pillars and overall aesthetics seem like really nice details and also seem pretty cool for Zipcaster to maybe use in battle, and I'm overall a huge fan of this. It's a cool aesthetic we've never really seen before in Splatoon, and it seems like the place teenagers would go to play a weird sport, which is basically what Splatoon is. So yeah. I like it, and I hope if there's a test fire, this is one of the stages included. Last, but certainly not least, is customization. First of all, the name tags we saw are fully customizable with titles you unlock by playing Turf Wars. There may be other methods of unlock, but we don't know at the moment. The Splatoon account specifically mentions, and I quote, a gazillion possibility, so there's probably a lot to accumulate. Here's a nice concept art using a bunch of YouTubers like myself for different names, and I think this would just be so cool in game. The lines we saw at the end of the release date trailer are actually called medals, which are awarded at the end of each game, which are only visible to you and include things like home and away inkage. There should be a lot more of them that we don't know yet, and I'm hoping to see them. Next up, we got eight new hairstyles, four for inklings and four for octolings. These are all brand new, and I really like how they look overall, but I'm personally hoping we get a bit more for octolings, since we obviously have a bit less hairstyles than inklings. That being said, I love how these all look, and yes, I'll try the pompadour style. Next up is customization. Pants have a ton more, such as some new ones, you can customize the color on them, and some of them even have tears. However, it doesn't seem like you can attach gear to them like with shirts, hats, and shoes, though I'm pretty okay with this as I think we have enough gear as it is. While it's not directly stated, we can also see an inkling boy here wearing a headband that is only possible to be worn this way by an inkling girl in Splatoon 2. So hopefully, we can choose how we wear each gear piece for different styles, or there's just one universal style rather than two of them, either one I'm a fan of. Personally, I'm hoping for even more customization, such as wearing visors in different ways or changing the color of them, which would be really cool. Either way, with these earrings being added to headgear, eyebrow customization, and more, it seems like you're going to have a ton of options in this game. And that's all the brand new information we know so far. What are you guys most excited for? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you guys in another video.